everybody, this is going to be a review between the DMK21 and the DMK41. Now if you don't know anything about these cameras, I'll, I'll run down, I'll go through the basics. They're both CCD cameras, okay, CCD sensors. Uh, they're monochromatic, so they're black and white, which is uh, ideal for hydrogen alpha imaging. And uh, they're great for solar system imaging, such as planets, the moon, and the sun. Okay, let's start with the DMK21. Like I said earlier, it's a, a quarter inch a CCD progressive scan. Okay, and that quarter inch is the diagonal. Uh, monochromatic. It has a resolution of 640 by 480 pixels. Uh, but what it does have is frame rate. The DMK21 can do 60 frames per second. So, small chip, high frame rate. Now let's talk about the pros of this camera. The pros are the frame rate. What is the frame rate good for? The frame rate is great for planetary imaging. Jupiter is the fastest rotating planet in the solar system, um, so you don't want to re be recording it for too long. Over, than, over more than a minute is too long, honestly, to image Jupiter. Uh, because after you know some you know so long the planet is rotating and each your in frames will be a little blurry you know uh, your stack won't be crisp so you want to gather a bunch of frames very very quickly okay so at 60 frames per second you can gather a thousand frames in roughly 16 and a half seconds that's really good another pro for the DMK21 is high powered solar imaging when you start increasing your focal length, let's say using a power meter or a Barlow, and you start really magnifying at high power, and you're zoomed in on the solar disk, uh, features of the sun do shift around just enough that after a, a bit of recording, uh, you could have plasma moving from one direction or the other, especially around active AR regions, or even on a filament, and even prominences. However, this camera, the DMK21, Okay, at 60 frames per second, again, you can gather a thousand frames in 16 and a half seconds. That's very good. I can almost guarantee you in 16 seconds, you're really not going to get much, you know, shift or changes on, on the solar disk, okay? Nothing that's really going to mess up your frames. Now think about this. If you want to gather 2,000 frames, I mean, that's like, that's, that's 32 seconds. That's amazing. And also, just to mention... A good thing about having this frame rate, especially when increasing your focal length um, and at high powered uh, on the sun, is whenever you increase your focal length, tracking becomes more and more of an issue. Obviously, the closer and closer and closer you zoom in on something, the better and better your tracking needs to be, okay? Now, if you don't have a precise polar alignment, if you start increasing your solar telescope focal length over like 2,000 millimeters, okay, using extenders, um, you you want to gather a lot of frames very quickly because after a couple seconds or maybe after you know 20 or 30 seconds uh, the Sun will start to drift okay if you're focused on one sunspot it, it might start drifting you know just slightly so you don't want to be taking too much time okay now if you have a precise polar alignment and you're tracking and your your equipment is excellent then it's not so much of a big deal now the cons. The cons are definitely the resolution and the sensor size as you can see in front of you. Uh, the con is if you don't have a lot of time to image and process etc and you want to build a hook a camera up to your telescope and get a full disk solar image uh, this isn't the camera for you because you're gonna have to stitch together several panels to make a full disk mosaic. Okay. Uh, the other con too is lunar imaging. Uh, lunar Im imaging you don't need a fast frame rate. The fact that the, the surface of the moon is not shifting or changing, uh, you don't need to rely on gathering lots of frames very quickly. I mean, heck, you could gather one frame per second and just take your time as long as your tracking is good and, and the weather's good. You know, take your time on the moon. It's not like stuff is shifting around. Uh, you might want the frame rate if you're trying to get an ISS transit, uh, then you might want the frame rate, okay? But uh, the pro, the con, I'm sorry, the con is the fact that it is kind of small uh, the, a lunar, uh, you know, a full disk image for the moon and the sun is going to be very hard to achieve with anything over, you know, 500 millimeter focal length. Um, so that is the main con. But that's my thoughts on the DMK21. Uh, if you're into planetary, it's it's awesome. 
If you're into high-powered uh, solar imaging, it's awesome. If you're into high-powered uh, lunar imaging, it's still awesome. Uh, so that's pretty much all to say about that. And uh, let's go over and take a look at the DMK41. Make sure this is in focus for you. And you can already, I think that's in focus. If it's not, I apologize. Uh, if not, you should be able to see already how much bigger the sensor is. Okay, so the DMK41 has a max frame rate of 15 frames per second. Okay, so it, that's not that much. And like I said, to gather a thousand frames, that's going to take you about 66 seconds. Now here's the pros. Lunar imaging. You don't need to be taking uh, lots of frames very quickly. So for lunar imaging, this would be my camera of choice. For full disk solar images, this would be my camera of choice. Even if I'm not doing full disk, let's say at prime focus, my uh, if my focal length is high enough, I can't even fit a full disk even on this uh, sensor size. Uh, but it's still nice because you know you might just need two two panels. You know, with my telescope, I need two panels to get a full disk with the with this camera. Now, if I were to use the DMK21, I would need about four panels, maybe five. Um, so that's the uh, advantage. Uh, the cons, the cons are obviously the frame rate. Uh, the, it, this is not a really good camera to do planetary imaging. The sensor's too big. You know, you, you got to really bump up your focal length to really fill out the uh, the chip. You know, with Saturn or Jupiter. And even then, if you're at high powered, you know, obviously tracking becomes more of an issue at high powered. And you need frame rate, you need frames very quickly, and you're not going to get lots of frames very quickly. Now, I have had success. I have imaged uh, Jupiter and Saturn with this camera, and it comes out fine. But you're going to get better results with the DMK21. Uh, and the other con, of course, is high powered imaging. Um, it does work fine, but at high powered, especially on the sun, if I want to gather a bunch of frames, it takes me over a minute. And after 60 seconds, some solar features just might shift around just enough. I mean, you can create a good image and most people won't notice it, but to the trained eye, if you're really into it and you really want to get a, an excellent image, you a lot of your frames you're going to have to throw away because from your first frame to your last frame, it might be uh, completely different because of that filament just moved just enough, or the plasma flowed along, uh, you know, flowed along, flowed along, you know, the AR active region just enough. Um, and also a con of this camera is ISS transits. If you really want to get the International Space Station transiting the Moon or the Sun, uh, a frame rate is definitely the way to go. Uh, 15 frames per second. I actually filmed the ISS crossing the disk once with this camera and it only lasted for nine frames, okay? The, the ISS transited in nine frames. So to slow that animation down, it's not very smooth, okay? Now it's 60 frames per second, okay, the ISS transit, I would have a lot more frames during that transit and it would, it would be a much smoother animation. So that's my thoughts on the DMK41. Now if you're thinking, well, which camera do I get? Well, it depends on what you enjoy. If you really only enjoy solar, and if you especially only do low-powered solar imaging, I would get this camera, and then you can do some lunar. If you're into planets and maybe high-powered solar lunar imaging, where you're zoomed in on the crater, or you're zoomed in on a sunspot, then I would have to say the DMK21. So to me, overall, it makes sense actually to buy the DMK21, because it's $240 cheaper, uh, it does have a smaller sensor, of course, but that frame rate just, I think, makes up for it in the long haul. Uh, unless you're just really, really lazy, <laughs> or you don't have time to do mosaics, then maybe this guy is, is your choice. But they're both excellent cameras, and uh, I'm going to shut up and go outside and um, hook these up to my solar telescope, and you'll be able to see first-hand results. Alrighty, I'll see you outside.